In this segment, we're going to continue looking at object properties, and this time we're going to look at the density, stitch length, compensation, and underlay choices that are applied to the objects. And probably the first thing you're going to notice is that these options are actually grayed out, which means I'm not able to actually just manually go in and change them. This, they're here, um, specifically for fill stitch, they're here shown to us so that we know what we can expect, but they're actually controlled by the fabric settings. And so just as an example, I've got this large area, um, well not a large area, but I have a piece of um, embroidery fill in step with no style and it's just a simple sort of pattern to it. And what I'm going to do is I'll just go ahead and use the slow redraw to see exactly what it looks like. So I can go ahead and quickly let it stitch. I can see it draws around the outside. It does um, like a perpendicular uh, grid or packing underlay, I guess is what you could call it. And then it puts the weave fill on top. And so I'll just stop it right there and show this, this is what I would expect. I can see that the density is set at 0.4 millimeters. The stitch length is set at 3 millimeters. The compensation is set at 0.3 millimeters. And the underlay is set at packing. And like I said, those things are coming from our fabric choices. So if I went right now to look, I can see that we're set on embroidery normal and we're set on, sorry, not corduroy, cotton. So these are the settings that came because we were set for embroidery normal and cotton. And if you recall, um, I'll just show this again. When we looked at the, the show help for fabric settings, this is going to give us a general idea of the fact that Right now, I did embroidery normal, starting with density 40 for normal 40s weight thread. Now, as an example, we could also have embroidery normal light, which is going to still start with that same density setting, but it's going to have lighter underlay. And if you went to embroidery light, starting with a lighter density, 0.55, or and it's for thicker thread. That's the concept is if you're using 30 weight thread, you want to go to embroidery light. If you go to embroidery ultra light, density is very open, 8.5, and it's for heavier, even heavier threads such as wool. Or maybe you've got um, a large embroidery thread, like 12 weight embroidery thread. So, and then embroidery heavy, starting with density 3.5, for thinner threads such as metallics. So this is what's happening. Now, if I close this, choose the fabric settings and change it from embroidery normal to let's say embroidery normal light which if you recall has similar underlay settings but has less underlay so let's just go ahead and choose um, an option from here I'll just go it just says standard normal light let's try that and then you would need to choose your fabric color well it's not the most important thing but I'll just choose a beige something similar so that it doesn't not too dark in the background and I'll say okay now right away, looking over at my design, I can see that when I went to embroidery light, that we went from packing plus underlay to netting underlay. And the underlay, or sorry, the density and the stitch length and the compensation were the same as previous. So anyway, if I use the slow redraw and start at this time, you can see here that we don't have the edge underlay, but we actually end up with what's known as um, a double grid underlay or I guess netting underlay which means it's put in two rows of this um, you know running stitch underlay before it does so perpendicular to each other and then at a 45 degree angle to the top stitching so generally speaking we were able to change the underlay type by changing the fabric type and each time you choose a different type of fabric so that was still embroidery normal well, why don't we go to embroidery um, light and choose from there uh, we'll just go with the standard light and again a lighter colored fabric say okay and now I can see that I'm going to have for my weave fill edging for the underlay and my density has been opened up now it's 0.55 stitch length still at 3 my compensation has been increased to 0.4 and these change all of these numbers change each time you choose a different type of fabric so again with the slow redraw and you'll see you just have an edge underlay and no I guess net or um, packing or grid underlay whatever you want to call it 
So you can see here that that's what's happening. And okay, so again, continuing on with the concept, these things we can control them, but they come from the fabric settings, and that's why they're grayed out, and you don't just simply choose them as it's an overall thing for the whole design. What style of uh, fabric are you showing sewing on, and then the software will generate the appropriate density stitch lengths and underlay for that type of fabric. So that's a little bit more about the object properties, and all of the ones that I've talked about so far, so far, have been specifically related to the the tab for um, the weave or sort of the fill tab. Oh, but I should show before I wrap up this segment. Um, it's different for the satin fill. So if I change the satin fill, then they change. So they're still grayed out, but they change the stitch length or the density. Well, first of all, there is no stitch length because if you recall when I said a satin fill, there's no stitching through the middle. So the stitch length is more or less determined by the shape or the size of the object. But in this case, we can see here that it's going to give us a single underlay. So let's First of all, let's make this be smaller because I don't think you would normally do a satin stitch that big. So here we have the settings. Let's just see what that looks like. So if I push start, that's pretty much it. I'll stop right there. Maybe I can, can I back that up? No, I'll go back to the beginning, start it again, and stop it right there. So you can see that this is all the underlay that was provided. It walked down the middle, walked down one edge, and started to stitch, stop. And so if we chose, this, I remember this was embroidery light. If we go back to sort of embroidery normal and choose either cotton or you could choose like standard normal and a lighter fabric and say okay. And so now I can see that we're going to have a zigzag underlay plus, which is probably meaning plus an edge run plus a zigzag. So let's see what it looks like. So there's the edge run, there's the zigzag, and here is the satin stitches that go on top. So we were able to change those things again just by selecting the different fabrics. So the choices um, are slightly different. The, the fabric choices are the same, and how they're going to affect the, these objects will relate to the type of stitch that the object is going to have and also the size that the object is. So those are some general observations about the object properties and how they relate to the density and composition and underlay or stitch length. And But again, all of this has been specifically to do with the fill of the object and now we're going to come back and I'll just talk about the settings to do with the outline of our objects.